Welcome everybody to this part 14.5, the UIP model of the foreign exchange market. Before we jump into the model, I would like to explain how we want to set up a macroeconomic model. So in the first step, it is important that we define the equilibrium conditions, we derive the slope of the curves, and we determine the equilibrium by looking at where do the two curves intersect. Afterwards, it is the case that we identify a shock and we want to find out how is this shock digested by the economy we are looking at. It is always an exogenous variable which changes in the beginning and then the endogenous variable response. In order to find out how the, cur how the shock is digested, we have to find out which curve shifts in which direction and we have to use the equations in order to find out which curve is affected. In the graph, we'll shift the curves and determine the new equilibrium. And afterwards, we are going to confirm the graphical results by computing multipliers. In the end, we compare and conclude. So the model I'm going to roll out right now is of course related to the UIP equation. Uh, when we look into the textbook we find the following version of the UIP equation. Uh, the dollar interest rate is equal to uh, the interest rate of uh, the euro plus the relative expected change in the exchange rate. So the uh, textbook is written uh, from the U.S. perspective so that the U.S. economy is a home current country and the Euroland is a foreign economy. But I would like to keep this model as flexible as possible so that we can also analyze, for example, uh, the relationship of the Rus Russian ruble against uh, the U.S. dollar or the situation in Turkey and uh, the relationship between the Turkish lira and the euro area. So, like we have to keep this model as flexible as possible, and therefore we drop the currency signs and we just say R is a domestic uh, interest rate, R star the foreign interest rate, and the exchange rate is the price of one unit of the foreign currency in terms of domestic currency. So when we talk about the Russian economy and we want to analyze it from the Russian perspective, then R, this is a Russian interest rate. R star might be the American interest rate and the exchange rate E. Uh, this is the price of one unit of the foreign currency. So price of US dollar measured in Russian rubles. In the following, we would like to use this equation and uh, to derive the following graph. There is one vertical line and this vert vertical line represents the home return curve. And there is a downward sloping curve and this downward sloping curve is convex. And this uh, green curve is like the foreign return curve. We are inserting these two curves in a diagram where we have the exchange rate on the vertical axis and the home return and the foreign return on the horizontal axis of this graph. Let's go back to the equations. And in the first step, we define that the left-hand side represents the home return, HR, and the right-hand side determines the foreign return, FR. So the UIP condition can also be written in the following form, HR is equal to FR. In the first step, let's think about the characteristics of the HR curve. Uh, this curve symbolizes the home return and hence the left-hand side of this equation. Uh, the home return curve is a vertical line because uh, it does not depend on the exchange rate. And we just find uh, the position of this orange curve uh, by looking at the interest rate level. And we are inserting uh, this vertical line at a position which represents 
uh, 5% or 10% domestic interest. Deriving the slope of the FR curve is a little bit more complex. So the second curve, the green curve in this diagram, symbolizes the foreign return, which is given by the right-hand side of equation 6. FR is equal to R star plus the expected change in the exchange rate. In case that we want to compute the slope of this curve, it is very important uh, that we uh, solve equation 7 for the exchange rate E. And then it's very easy to differentiate because when we want to determine the slope of this curve in this diagram, we have to compute the ratio DE DFR. And this is what we are going to do now. Uh, we are solving equation 7 for the exchange rate E because then it is very easy to compute DE DFR. So in a first step, it is a case that we put this R star on the other hand side of the equation so, th so that it will pip pop up with a negative sign here. Furthermore, we are splitting up this fraction into two fractions, the expected exchange rate over the exchange rate minus E over E. This minus E over E is nothing else than a minus one. When we put this minus one on the left-hand side of the equation, it will pop up with a positive sign here. In the next step, we multiply through by the exchange rate. Uh, we end up at this relationship here. And when we divide by the term in brackets, we have isolated E on the left-hand side of the equation. So we solved equation 7 for the exchange rate level E. Now it is very easy to differentiate with respect to FR. We have to uh, think about the rule of differentiation of a fraction. And this is a uh, derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator. and then we square the denominator. So let's differentiate the numerator with respect to fr. fr is not included in the numerator and therefore um, we get the zero. Zero times the denominator. Then we say minus. We differentiate the denominator with respect to fr. We get a one and we multiply through by the numerator the expected exchange rate. Afterwards, we square the denominator. Um, we can write the whole stuff a little bit differently. Um, there's one negative sign here, negative sign is here. So the numerator is positive, denominator is positive, but there is a negative sign in front of this expression so that the FR curve has a negative slope. What about the shape of this curve? Is it concave, convex, or linear? We have to compute the second derivative uh, with respect to uh, fr. And when we compute the second derivative, we learn that this relationship is positive, and therefore the fr curve is convex. Now we are able to uh, insert both curves in one diagram. The orange line is uh, the home return curve, the green line is the foreign return curve, and we are able to determine uh, the equilibrium exchange rate level in the intersection of the two curves. Let's go back to the slides in the beginning. It is the case that we have defined the equilibrium conditions by the UIP conditions. We derived the slope of the two curves and we determined the equilibrium. So now it's time to analyze one shock. Uh, we have to find out which curve shifts in which direction and we have to determine the new equilibrium. We will assume that the domestic central bank decreases in. I'm very sorry. We assume that the domestic central bank increases the domestic interest rate. 
Hence, we have to find out which part of the uh, graph is affected. And when the domestic central bank increases the domestic interest rate, then of course the home return curve is affected and the home return curve has to shift to the right. This is uh, already indicated here in this graph. Uh, the home return curve shifts to the right and the new equilibrium is given in point two. So that uh, when the domestic central bank increases the domestic interest rate, uh, the exchange rate decreases, which is an appreciation of the domestic currency. So when the interest rate increases, this makes the domestic currency stronger. We are done now with the graphical solution to this problem. And now it's time to compute a multiplier. The UIP model basically consists only out of one equation and therefore we can only determine one endogenous variable. Which variable is endogenous? Um, of course, the exchange rate is endogenous and therefore it makes sense to solve for the endogenous variable E. Let's do that. Uh, we solve this relationship for E. In a first step, we put R star minus 1 on the other hand side of the equation so that the R star pops up with a negative sign and the minus 1 pops up with a positive sign on the left hand side of the equation. In the next step, we multiply through by E and we divide by R minus R star plus one. So we have solved the whole UIP condition for the exchange rate E. And now it is time to differentiate this relationship with respect to R, the variable which was changed by the central bank. Let's do so. So we differentiate uh, the fraction with respect to R. Um, when we differentiate the numerator with respect to R, there is no R in the numerator. So therefore we receive a zero here and we multiply through by the denominator. Then we say minus. When we differentiate the denominator with respect to R, we get a one because R is included one time in the denominator, so we get the one in brackets. And we multiply through by uh, the numerator. Afterwards, we square like the denominator. Uh, we can write the whole stuff a little bit differently. The negative sign is here, stems from this minus sign over there. And hence the numerator is positive, denominator is positive, but we have a negative sign here so that the whole expression is like negative smaller than zero. This negative sign indicates in case that the domestic interest rate increases, then the exchange rate decreases. So if the domestic interest rate increases, the domestic currency will appreciate. In this uh, part, we have to be a little bit careful because we are working with this uh, textbook version. And in the textbook version, the domestic country is the US. So when the US increases the interest rate, exchange rate decreases, which is here an appreciation of the home currency like an appreciation of the dollar. Please remember that in this model like the exchange rate is determined in the way the amount of dollar for like one euro. Thank you very much for watching this video. So now we are done completely with chapter 14. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye bye.